Hey guys, my name is Katerina Langold. Welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about reasons why we procrastinate. A lot of people believe that the reason why they procrastinate is because there's something wrong with them. They're inherently lazy and that is why they keep on pushing and pushing and pushing important things, don't get it done. And if only they weren't lazy, things would have been so different. So today we will talk about the actual reasons, reasons that are grounded in neuroscience, why we procrastinate, why we delay taking action on important things. There is a big difference between procrastination and laziness. When we are lazy, we don't want to do anything, right? It's usually a sign of very low energy level. Procrastination is a form of avoidance. So sometimes when we procrastinate, we are not just not willing to do anything. We are not willing to do a very particular thing. Do you see the difference? A lazy person just wants to sit on the couch all day doing nothing. A person who is procrastinating might be doing a gazillion of things, you know, organizing shelves in their kitchen, but not getting to an important project that they are actually procrastinating on. So from the perspective of your brain, from a psychological perspective, laziness and procrastination are certainly not the same thing. Not at all. So let's look at the reasons why you might be procrastinating. And today we will talk about three of those reasons. The first reason is lack of motivation or excitement about the end goal. So our brain is designed to preserve resources that we have and to preserve energy, preserve our time, preserve our effort. So we need to survive. There is a limited amount of resources. We have to allocate it on things that matter. If we spend our effort, our time, and our energy on everything that, you know, any opportunity that pops up, then very quickly we will run out of energy. So we have a built-in mechanism that assesses the importance of any particular goal, any particular task, And if it is important enough, if we pass this kind of importance test, then it goes ahead and gives us a surge of dopamine, an important neurotransmitter that is involved in our motivation. So we go and take action. Because taking action requires overcoming the friction, right? So the most difficult thing when you get something done is to overcome this initial friction, like kind of go over this hill that we have, um, to take action. And once we are past it, continuing is much easier than starting, right? So to overcome this initial resistance, we need dopamine. To get the dopamine, we need to pass a test whether something is important or not. How does our brain know if something is important or not? There are a few mechanisms that in our brain operate there. And one of it is our cortex, the part of our brain, which is rational, logical, that is helping us like long-term thinking, all of that stuff. And our cortex is a wonderful mechanism that doesn't work when we are stressed. So our cortex is actually suppressed when we experience a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. And what is acting instead of cortex is our subcortical regions. For example, our limbic system has a built-in mechanism for assessing whether something is important or not. Problem is, and the good thing that it works during stress and in high threat circumstances, problem is though that it's very short-sighted. Uh, not to say the least. The goal is to make sure that we survive here and now. So our cortex looks kind of far ahead and sees, okay, this goal, you know, doing this thing will give us benefits in a month from now, in a year from now, in two years from now. How great. But for our limbic system, long term doesn't matter. Present day survival matters. So when we are stressed and our cortex is suppressed, we are choosing things as important. Not that those are important long-term, but those that are important short-term. So one thing why you might be procrastinating is because in the absence of cortex invasion or inclusion in the decision-making process, um, we are making very short-sighted assessment of what is important and what is not. So this is number one. You lack motivation. You don't have importance tag for the action and your brain says, hey, let's not waste our resources on that. Number two and number three are about fear. So again, 
not laziness, but fear. Avoidance always has a piece of fear in it. But there are very different two types of fears that we experience that prevent us from taking action. One of them would be kind of more obvious to most of us. It's fear of failure. But the second one is kind of unusual, but it also plays an important role, which is fear of success. First, fear of failure. It's kind of easy, right? When we take action, there is a chance of mistake. Mistakes don't feel good. If you don't want to feel good and you don't want to make mistakes, you'd better not do anything that can cause it to happen. Meaning, you know, if you sit on a couch and don't take risks, the chances of failure are close to zero, except for long-term, but who cares about long-term, right? So our short-sighted limbic system, which is guiding our fear response, tells us, hey, let's just not risk present day, maybe okay, not awesome circumstances for the sake of this future amazing whatever, because there is a chance that it will feel very uncomfortable. So fear of failure, big element that stops our chances of taking action. Now let's look at this other side of fear, fear of success. You might think, hey, hey, isn't it like if you know that I will be successful in doing something that I would never procrastinate? The reality is, is our brain is kind of smart. Sometimes it's smart, sometimes it isn't, but usually it kind of assesses things which we may not consciously be aware of. And think about it. What does it mean to succeed in certain projects? What does it mean that you succeeded getting a promotion? What does it mean that you succeeded in making a new friend or starting a new relationship? That means a new stage in life. That means change of your life circumstances. And oh my goodness, our brain, in, in particular our sub- subcortical regions, doesn't like change. It loves predictability, it loves stability, and it likes it so much more than it likes improvement. So fear of success is a very real thing because success means change. It means shifting to a different level, and we don't know what happens in that level. We don't know what are the threats out there are. We know we're familiar with the threats of this level, but the other level is very much an unknown. So we need to prevent this unknown to happen. And we procrastinate so we don't take action, which will take us to the next point. And this is a very interesting thing. Have you ever experienced procrastination at the very, very, very end of the project? When you've done almost everything, like 99%, and just 1% before you complete it, you stop and don't finish it. So you don't get to the next level. This is exactly your fear of success working to protect you from change and also to protect you from success and leveling up. So understanding those elements can transform your relationship with yourself because we oftentimes try to punish ourselves for being lazy, while in reality, we lack motivation, so there is not enough internal importance of something that we're doing. We are afraid of making a mistake because in the past we've been punished for mistakes and we try to avoid them, so fear of mistakes, or we fear leveling up, which will bring a lot of unpredictability to our life, and our brain is trying to defend us from it. I love brain science because it helps me understand myself so much better so I can make more informed decisions on how I want to approach my life and um, solve different circumstances and different problems. So if you, same as me, are excited to use your brain to its full potential, I would love you to join me and subscribe for this channel. If you found this video interesting, if you learned something new, please give it a thumbs up so more people find out about this video and explore something new for themselves. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.